But Title IX is not just about sports, it's about education and opportunity. Jeffrey Grandstrand shows us the life of the woman behind Title IX and how her passion is still impacting women and minorities. Mink's first cousin, Ruth Mackay, says women back in the day were considered as second-class people and only had very limited options for any professional career opportunities. Women only, uh, if they did go to college, uh, we would go for either a teacher or a nurse. But even a nurse would be at a nursing school. The other option was a secretary, which you went to a business school. But we didn't even think we could do anything else, like CPA or anything. So we were very handicapped in uh, choosing our life profession. Patsy May got her bachelor's degree at the University of Hawaii, majoring in zoology and chemistry. She wanted to become a doctor, but her dreams fell short after being denied to medical school. Oh, the reason why she couldn't go into medical school is because she was a woman and she was a minority. And as a woman in those days, you could only be a nurse, a secretary, or a teacher. And she didn't want that. She wanted to go to medical school. And because they were, denied her as a woman and a minority, she was like, I'm going to go and change this. So she got accepted to the Law School University of Chicago, and she graduated in 1951. Patsy Mink became the first Asian American woman to practice law in Hawaii. And in 1965, she was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, becoming the first woman of color in Congress. During her term, Mink began the roots of Title IX to push for equal opportunity. She uh, came up with Title IX because, again, she wanted to help minority and help the women. And so Title IX is not just for sports. I mean, it encompasses a whole uh, area uh, of... Uh, giving women opportunities. Well, it's important to care about Title IX and giving equal opportunity because not everybody has the same resources or the same privilege. You're faced with being a minority and you're faced with being a woman and you're constantly discriminated against. And without something like Title IX, you're not ensuring that in the school systems that you know everybody should be given that opportunity regardless of your status or how you grew up. Or Title IX, also known as the Equal Opportunity in Education Act, was enacted in 1972. The act prohibits sex discrimination in education and has helped increase academic, athletic, and professional opportunities for women and people of color. Aside from politics, Mink's grandniece and WSU graduate Shayna Gibo says her auntie was not always the politician when it comes to family. As far as personally, she was just, you know, Auntie Patsy. She came to the family reunions. She was sending Christmas cards. She brought dessert. You know, she was in touch with everybody. Patsy Mink was the driving force behind Title IX. She was a small woman with a big voice, breaking many barriers, and a family member with a big heart. Auntie Patsy was a good example because she is an example of a person who was told that she cannot achieve anything because she was a woman and a minority. Instead of becoming a doctor, she became a lawyer and truly changed the system. She really fought for the underdog. Her passion to make a change still has had a great impact in our community. On September 28, 2002, Patsy T. Mink died after a long struggle with pneumonia. The United States Congress has now renamed Title IX after Patsy Mink in order to honor her lifelong legacy. I believe that there is so much that still remains to be done, that can be done, and that all of you here will make it possible. In 1972, only 9% of doctors were women. By 1994, the number had climbed to 38%. Those are some telling numbers, Jeff. Yeah. Lindsay, what surprised you about the research that you uncovered during this uh, story here? You know, I spent countless hours down in archives here at the WSU Library, and I think what surprised me most of all was just the lack of of pictures, of articles, of video footage. There just was nothing here. About women before 1979? It, yeah, surprisingly enough. Interesting. And any surprises for you? The surprise were just the role of women, how it's constructed way back in the day. But what was really inspiring, how you can really see where one woman can make a difference and how changing all the roles for where we got in our society now. That's you make. Yes. Thank you both for that story. Still ahead, Fashion Week is coming to Pullman. Watch out Louis Vuitton and Juicy Couture. The WSU Apparel Design student creations are hitting the runway.
And the Crocodile Hunter drops in for a visit at WSU. Find out why just ahead.